And just as the Prophet returned to Mecca and life resumed, Multim ibn Adi was the one who had given protection to the Prophet وسلم, and it was under the protection of Mut'im that he had been living. This was a very precarious situation, very awkward. Why is it awkward? Because his own tribe has abandoned him. Also, Mut'im himself was a very elderly man, very old man. And so the Prophet realizes he needs to leave Mecca. He's already tried Ta'if, Ta'if has failed him. The Prophet began going to the tribes that used to come for Hajj and presenting himself, asking any of them to sponsor him. There are records that he was doing this from before the death of Abu Talib, but he was only doing it for da'wah reasons. After the death of Abu Talib, the tune changes. And it is not just accepting Islam, but it is also political asylum. And of them is the story of Rabi'a ibn Abbad. He remembers as a young man coming to Mina, his father was the chieftain of their tribe. I remember a young man coming and speaking to my father, telling him to embrace the worship of Allah and leave idolatry and to accept him into his tribe and he said I saw a man standing behind him waiting for him to finish an elderly man wearing a Yemeni cloak having two ponytails when this young man finished and moved to the next tent this elderly man came forward and said oh people this is a person who's calling you to give up your gods Allah and Uzza and he's calling you to give up the way of your forefathers so do not give up that way and stay with the way of your forefathers so Rabia I said, I asked my father, who is this young man? And who is the older man who came to cancel what he said? So his father said, this is the young man they claim is a prophet. And that elderly man is his uncle Abd al-Uzza, meaning Abu Lahab. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, who will take me so that I may preach the message of Islam, the message of La ilaha illallah, because Quraysh has prevented me from preaching the kalam of Allah. He approached of the tribes that we know, the famous tribe of Kinda, the tribe of Banu Abdullah ibn Kalb, the tribe of Banu Hanifa, the tribe of Banu Amid ibn Sa'sa. Sa All of these tribes, they rejected the message, some of them more harshly than others. One of these is from the tribe of Kinda, and the chieftain listened with great attention. And he said, this is a very interesting message. Come with me, I will grant you an audience with our other chieftains. And what you said to me, say to them. So the Prophet ﷺ followed him, they went into the gathering, and he convinced the gathering and the Prophet ﷺ preached the message to them. Then the man who had brought him in spoke up. Oh my fellow tribesmen, if we were to take this matter from this young man and adopt him, we will have a message through which we can conquer the other Arabs. So then he turned to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Now tell me, if we were to follow you in this matter of yours, and then Allah gives us victory over all those who are your enemies. Will you give us control of this affair after you? Meaning, will we be the rulers after you? So the Prophet ﷺ said, the mulk belongs to Allah, the land belongs to Allah, and Allah gives it to whomever he pleases. So this chieftain said, so you're asking us to follow you, stick our necks out behind you in order to have them cut off. And then after we have spilled our blood and you have used it to conquer the Arabs, then you will take the kingdom. Go, we have no need of this. Another story we have is that of the Banu Shayban ibn Tha'laba. So when they go to this tribe, Abu Bakr asks them, he is with the Prophet, says the salam, and asks them, Man al -qawm? So they say, we are the Banu Shayban ibn Tha'laba. Abu Bakr leans over to the Prophet and says, Ya Rasulullah, the Banu Shayban are of the most noble and the most illustrious and the most intelligent tribes of the Arabs. And they have amongst them Fulan and Fulan and Fulan. He mentioned their tribal leaders. And they ask, who are you? They say, Abu Bakr says, I am the son of Abu Qahafa from the Quraysh. And this is the grandson of Abdul Muttalib. And then the Banu Shayban say, what is your matter? Why are you here basically, right? And the Prophet ﷺ says, we have come here to invite you to ibadatillah azza wa jal. And that you reject the go false gods. And we also ask you to accept us, to take us into your tribe. Because the Quraysh has, they have been arrogant and they have been evil and they have rejected us, prevented us, excuse me, from spreading the speech of Allah. And Allah is al-ghani al-hamid. I am asking for your help, but Allah does not need your help. 
So the tribal leader said, what else? Is there anything more than this? So the Prophet ﷺ recited to them the famous verse of Surah Al-Anfal. قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِلْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Say, come, I will tell you what your Lord has forbidden for you. That you don't worship any besides Him. And you be good to your parents. And you be good to your relatives. And the verse goes on. And you don't eat the property of orphans. And you do this and you do that. And you do not do fahisha. And you be trustworthy in your judgment. The chieftain said, anything more than this? The Prophet ﷺ said, that in Allah Ta'ala, in Allah Ya'mur with Adli, that Allah commands to everything that is just, wal ihsani and perfection of manners, wa ita'id al qurba, and to be good to one's relatives, wa yanha an al fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi, and Allah forbids lewd deeds and transgressions and evils. Ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Allah is admonishing you so that you think and you be rightly guided. So the chieftain said, You have indeed come with good, and you have called us to the best of akhlaq and morals. And the Quraysh has lied against you. Your message is not what they have said. So I refer you to our Shaykh, our elder, Hani ibn Qais. Hani ibn Qais stood up. And he said, I have heard what you have said, O member of Quraysh. And I feel that if we leave our religion and our ways and embrace your ways after a first meeting, this will be a hasty decision. And it might cause us harm in the long run. And we also have people we have left behind. Not everybody comes for Hajj. What percentage come for Hajj? Right. Whose advice we have not sought on this matter and whose support is necessary. And so I think that we should wait and you should wait. And we shall return and you shall return, i.e., next year. And I also ask the advice of our military leader, Al Muthanna ibn Harith. Muthanna said, What our elder Hani has said is true. And we will not take any hasty decision in this matter. And there is another matter as well. We are a group of Arabs who have loyalties and treaties with two groups of people. Number one, our neighboring Arab tribes, and he mentions them. And number two, Kisra, the Sassanid emperor. As for the Arabs, we don't have any fear or worry about them. But as for Kisra, we have a deal with him to be neutral in all affairs in the Arabian Peninsula. And this matter of yours does not seem to be something the kings would approve of. If we were to accept it, it would only be in our dealings with the Arabs and not with our dealings with Kisra. And so the Prophet ﷺ responded, your response has been good and has been sincere. But listen to this, Allah's religion will only be helped by those who have embraced it fully. And so the Prophet ﷺ stood up to leave with Abu Bakr and then he said, and what if I were to tell you that this matter of Kisra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you victory over the kingdom of Kisra and you will enjoy their land and their money and their captive women. Would you then accept? Whatever their younger one said, yes, of course, bala, there's no question we would do this, right? But they didn't believe that this would actually happen. And so the Prophet ﷺ left them at this and they did not embrace Islam at this stage. Of course, later on in the Fatih Makkah phase, everybody embraced Islam. And this is an amazing prediction that SubhanAllah, even though the Prophet ﷺ seems to be in a very dire situation, he has yaqeen in Allah. The time will come when you will be enjoying the palaces of Kisra. What happened with Kisra? When the Prophet ﷺ sent his letter to Kisra, he tore the letter up, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, because they tore my letter up, Allah will tear their kingdom up like he tore my letter up. And for 400 years, the Roman Empire could not damage the Persian Empire like the Muslims dissolved it in two years. To this day, historians are completely astounded. How could this have happened? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them the khabari kana. There was nothing left of them. And this is something the Prophet ﷺ told to the Bani Shayban. There are indications that the message of Islam had already reached Medina. And of them, Suwayd ibn Samit was the poet of the Khazraj. He heard that there is this magician slash poet in the Quraysh. So when he went to Mecca for Hajj, he hunted the Prophet ﷺ down. So he goes to the Prophet ﷺ. He says, I have heard that you have eloquent speech. I have something similar to you. And so the Prophet says, what do you have? Let me listen to it. So he recites his poetry. The Prophet said, what you have is good, but what I have is better. Because what I have is tanzilum min rabbil alameen. So Suwaid said, let me hear. So the Prophet began reciting the Quran to him. And Suwaid was dumbstruck, speechless. And so Suwaid said, let me think about this. 
Suwayd returned to Yathrib and he died in the battle of Bu'ath. Later on, his people, his tribes, the Banu Auf said, we are certain that he died a Muslim. There are also other references. One of them is to a young man from one of the tribes of the Khazraj that when the Prophet approached him, he almost converted. But the chieftain of the Khazraj said to him, don't worry about this guy. We're coming for another reason. Don't worry about him. So he returned back to Yathrib as well. And he was stabbed in the battle of Bu'ath and as he's dying, he began saying the tasbih and the tahmeed and the takbir. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So there are references to Islam having reached Yathrib, but the main conversion, the first conversion takes place in the 10th year of the Da'wah.